Sabaydi everyone. Everyone's always asking me what's it like for Lao people in Alaska. We have Lao people in Alaska? How many Lao people are there in Alaska? So I figured we'd turn this into a series and today we're gonna go visit the temple, the Lao Buddhist temple in Mountain View. So I'll take you guys with me and maybe we'll stop by the grocery store as well because you can't have one without the other. With an Asian community, you're gonna have a temple and you're gonna have an Asian market. So I'll take you guys along with me. The kids are loaded up in the car. It's a beautiful day. We're going into the ghetto, so stay strapped or get clapped. And according to the Smithsonian Magazine, Mountain View is one of the most diverse communities to live in the United States. At the corner of Shadi and Commercial is going to be our Buddhist temple. And these are the temple grounds. My grandpa was a Buddhist monk for a long period of time when we first moved up to Alaska. Sometimes I was a good kid and sometimes I was a bad kid. I remember running around these parts with all the other kids during morning prayer. I remember my grandma hunting me down, giving me the glare in the side eye, telling me to come into the temple and sit down. John, manang yu di me, she would say. And I should have known better. My grandpa was the head monk at the temple. My family had a well-known name in the community, and I was the eldest boy in my family. But like all children, I eventually grew up, learned to sit by my grandma's side in morning prayer. But I mean, let's be real. We're all just waiting for the food to come out. That's the best part. What was your favorite dish to eat at the temple? All this talk really makes me miss my grandpa. The experience at the temple wasn't only a spiritual one, but a labor of love. And in the heart of the ghetto, we have Red Apple. They don't advertise themselves to be an Asian market, but they low-key are an Asian market. I want everyone to pay close attention to the prices. Try not to have an aneurysm. But that's just what life is like up here in Alaska. The cost of living is high, and the cost for Asian foods is just as high to import. So I'm sure you can imagine being a foreigner, immigrated to America, speaking barely a lick of English, and having little skill to work in the workforce. How difficult it may have been to provide traditional food for your family. Clark Middle School is actually across the street from Red Apple, and I remember the badass Lao kids who would go to Red Apple in the morning before school started, shoplift and steal a bunch of candy, then come back to the school and hang out in the cafeteria like nothing ever happened. I presume that's what kids just had to do back then. Maybe the candy and the snacks was all they had to eat. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. But I'll tell you what though, I was emulating that style and I was going that way as well. Sagging my pants, doing the stupid walk with the limp, choosing a color, blue or red. The only thing I didn't do was grow out my bangs and grow out the rat tail. That was because my mom forbid it. So my mom said, oh hell no, and stuck me into an all white school on the south side of town. And just like that, it stopped speaking in slang and ebonic. And now you have me. But yeah, just like any other Asian store, this one has all the essential items. Meats, veggies, spices, drinks, candles, and other miscellaneous Asian items. And of course, the reason as to why Asians don't raisin, every Asian market's gotta have. Rice cooker! You! 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 Anyways, my time is up. I'll see you guys next time. I love ya. Goodbye.